Hey, what's up, guys? Wanted to make another video. Um, recent mail day stuff. Um, I haven't made one for a little bit, so just wanted to catch you guys up on what I picked up over the past few months. Um, let's get right into it then. So, I was able to pick these ones up. These are the 2006 Sterling. Uh, these are the white suede out of 50. Um, it's hard to pick up on camera, but it's actually like a suede finish on like the white part of the card itself. It's got the nice refractor shine on them. Um, really nice looking cards. They have like burgundy colored ones. There's a few different parallels in this set from 2006. I honestly like the white ones out of 50 the best. Um, I think there's ones out of 10, one, one of ones for each. I think there's like 20 or 30 cards of Ripken in this run, but these are really cool looking cards. Next we have 2003 um, this is Fleer Rookies and Greats. Uh, this is the Naturals. It's kind of a cool looking patch. It's got a little dirt on it. Um, no colors or anything, but these are number two, just 25. Uh, there's an auto version of this as well, an auto patch version, uh, that's on auction right now. So if you see it, don't bid on it for the next couple days so I can get it. Next, we have a 2004 Sweet Spot Classic. I just like the look of these Sweet Spot cards. Um, it's got the hollow foil on the front. No patch or anything, but just a nice looking overall design on the card. Next, we have a 2003 Upper Deck Signature Stars. Um, these are numbered just out of 69, 37 out of 69. Uh, Nothing too crazy about this card, but just a nice early auto of Ripken when they were still kind of hard to get in packs. Another tough one to pull. This one is 2001 Fleer, a Fleer Genuine. Um, these are numbered out of just 50, hand numbered. There's a dual version that are numbered out of 100, which is a dual auto. A bat auto version out of 100, which is kind of strange that they'd have just a singular bat out of 50. And then the duel would be twice as much of a print run, but I don't know. Strikes me as strange, but I guess another tough to pull, like early 2000s game use card. When game use cards actually <laughs> were scarce and rare to pull. Next, we have a 1998... Finally, was able to pick this one up. I've been chasing this for a long time. It's never been in my price point for some reason of what I wanted to pay for it. Um, this is the Platinum Portraits. So inside, this is a sleeve of the card. So the card's inside this like Platinum-looking sleeve. The full version of the card. I'm not going to take it out now, but I was able to finally pick one up at a decent price. They don't go to, for too much. I just never really wanted to pay the premium for them. You can go about for $30 or so. It's a pretty cool looking card. Next is one that used to be in high demand. They used to go for a lot of money back when they first came out. This is 1997 Select Tools of the Trade. This is the mirror blue version. There's a regular version and then they have these mirror blue versions. They're basically all blue out. Um, they were really tough pulls back in the day. I think one of like 360 packs or something like that. When they first came out, they were well over $100 for the Ripkins. Now they've, I don't know, there's not as much demand on them anymore as there used to be. But they're still really, really tough to find. I was glad to pick this one up. Next is one I've been looking for for a long time too. I've never been able to get. And I was finally able to get this one last week. Uh, it's the 1995 score Gold Rush Redemption. Um, I forget exactly the stipulations on how to get these, but basically you'd have to mail in a bunch of wrappers, or it might have even been a contest, but you ended up getting the um, the pinnacle hole-punched version for a full set of these. So... I was able to finally get this Ripken the other day. 
everything's the same on it except they just hole punch the entire card itself. I have a Tony Gwynn version and a checklist version of this as well. Next is one that's very strange to me. It's a 2020 Topps Transcendent uh, a Bunt, which is very strange. So on the back, it's a Bunt card, so you can enter the code and redeem it for a virtual card as well. But these are actually the in-hand versions. Um, I had one guy from our group, he actually redeemed it online. He was able to get a pretty good redemption bunt <laughs> digital card, whatever. Whatever that means, I'm not too uh, into the digital bunt cards at all. But it's a really nice looking card. Number to just 50. Next we have a 2001... SP. This is the milestone edition. These are uh, the gold parallels numbered to just 35. These are hand numbered. Not too much different about these than the regular versions except this little stripe here and then the little kind of gold border on the inside of the bat. That's the only difference basically on these ones as opposed to the regular base versions. The same on the back as well. Next we have a 2004 SP Legendary Cuts this is such a sweet looking card. Uh, these are numbered to 50. The 2004 SP had such nice product that came out that year. Um, just everything <laughs> across the board was just unreal. It's probably one of the nicest looking memorabilia sets from the early 2000s out there. And then I got the counterpart as well to that. So this is the all-time autos version here, and then this is just the legendary signatures here. I like that design rate. I don't know if you can pick up on it or not in the auto itself. Next is kind of a classic. It's a 1999, sticking with the SP, <laughs> uh, 1999 SP Authentic the Calligraphy. Just a nice looking card all around. Um, they have gold versions of these. I forget what the gold version of Ripken might be out of just eight. I'm not sure. I've never seen it pop up. But the gold versions I've seen of other players are really, really nice looking. So if I ever find one, I'm hoping to scoop one up. I didn't do this on purpose, but I'm sticking with more SP. So we got... Three, technically, three one-of-ones here. So what they did is they have certain different stats, basically, for these cards on each one. So for Ripken, he had a bunch of them this year. A few players only had, a, like, two or three. Ripken had, I think, 95. So technically, there's 95 different one-of-ones from 2004 SP Legendary Cuts. Um, this is the 71 extra base hits. It's just logoed one of one down there. This is the 25 home runs in 1986. So it's just a bunch of different stat lines for the card. Um, like I said, I believe there's 95 total. I mean, it still makes it rare. It's just, you know, <laughs> I've never been one to chase a whole bunch of like the different variations of the ones of ones, like 2007. Um, the Iron Man ones, where there's over a thousand different ones. It just doesn't do it for me, really. But I like these 2004 SPs. Um, this is a Triple Threads one of one. It's a White Whale. It's kind of got a cool platinum finish on it. Game used by Frank Robinson, Cal Ripken, and Brian Roberts. Strange for Roberts to be on there, but that's case is all. So, it's kind of cool, the white wheel combo. Definitely wouldn't consider this card a white whale in the uh, Ripken world, but it's a cool card nonetheless. Next we have a 2002 Donner's Classics. Nice looking patch there. This 2002 Donner's Classics, there's two versions of this card. There's 
one where he's batting, I believe, one where he's fielding. Um, they're just loaded with patches. They're they're higher numbered. I mean, out at ninety one, which isn't overly overly rare, but they're cool because they actually include the picture of the jersey that was used in the makeups. And for some reason, like this set has a ton of like nice looking patches that came out of these, so they did not skimp on <laughs> just regular basic jerseys. They threw a lot of patches in this particular set for some reason. Next we have a 2004 Donruss Elite. This is career best um, authentic prime jersey. It's a nice looking patch there. These are numbered to, out of 25. These are uh, 2004. See, back then they just would actually let you know that these are cut from a personally worn jersey from a major league baseball game worn by Cal Ripken. Like, Nowadays, everything is just so vague. You don't know where it's coming from. They don't even specify if it's worn by the player <laughs> depicted on the card or not. So I'd say these older game use cards definitely demand a premium where they specifically state out um, what they were, <laughs> where they came from, and who wore them, and when they were worn. Next is a tough one. It is a 2000 Fleer. Autographics. This is the uh, the gold version, numbered to just fifty parallel. The Fleer autographics have been skyrocketing in basketball lately for some reason. I don't know why. People are just understanding that <laughs> late nineties, early two thousands print runs on autographs were tough to pull, so they've just been going absolutely nuts. Uh, nothing too crazy about this card. I like the gold. Little parallel version of it, but all around nice card. Next, we have a 2004 Donruss. This is the time Donruss timelines. It's the boys of summer. It's a really nice looking patch here. Nice solid orange and black. A little tiny bit of gray in there. It's got the prime jersey denotation on there. These are numbered out of 100. Again, Personally, cut from an authentic jersey, personally worn by Cal Ripken in an official Major League Baseball game. So, you know where they're coming from. Nice card. I like the hollow foil look on the sides of it. Almost reminds me of like a National Treasures Panini type look. Next, we got a 2004 Fleer Greats. This is the glory of their time. This is a game worn patch. I mean, this patch is just stuffed right in there. This thing is <laughs> definitely prime. Mm. These are numbered to just 25. It's a nice looking card there. Next is a 2007 Upper Deck Premier. This is a Premier Patches. Premier Patches 2. So there's like a triple version of this as well. I don't know what happened with this part. It's not really a patch. It looks more like a jersey. Just a regular swatch of a jersey. Or maybe it's like part of the armband. I don't know. But it doesn't even fill up in the whole section of that 8. Which is a little strange. But I always like the Upper Deck Premier stuff. They did a really nice job with that. They didn't put it out for too many years, but it's a nice overall looking card. Next, we got another Sweet Spot. This is a 2003 Sweet Spot Classic. Nice prime patch here. It's numbered out of 75. It's a, like they say on the card itself, it's just like a classic nice looking card. Strange that they used the same picture on the front and the back. They could have uh, been a little more creative, but oh well. Sticking with the Sweet Spot. Here's a cool one. This is a Sweet Spot Threads game use patch. Um, this is kind of an all-star version. Numbered to just 35. I don't know if you can pick that up. There you go. 34, 35. So this is from a 2001 all-star jersey patch, which is really cool. The seller of this card, they didn't really 
know that it was it wasn't listed as such, but this is personally worn from Cal Ripken in two thousand All Star event. This is his last All Star game before he retired, so it's got nice sentimental value on that. Here's a super tough card. This is a nineteen ninety nine tops autograph. Um, these were like one out of every 5,000 or something packs for the Ripken. Jeter was really tough to pull to as well. But the Ripken, I don't know why, it was such a short printed card. I don't know why these don't command a lot more money. Because, like I said, they are impossible to pull out of packs. Far more impossible than any other card in this whole 99 tops. Nothing overly special about it. It's just pretty rare. Here's a really nice one. We'll circle back to this one a little bit later. It's a 2019 Topps Tech. Numbered out of 50. This is the black version. It's even got a really nice shine on the back of it as well. I guess I said you might see another one of these later on in this video. Next, we got a nice run of of patches, so we'll start with the 50. This is the Premier Upper Deck Premier Combos 2007. Um, Ryan Braun and Ripken. So this is the silver version out of 50. Then we've got the gold version out of 25. That's a nice dual patch there. And then the hollow foil version out of just 10. So these, actually, these two patches look very, very similar. It's not much other than just the change in the hollow foil on the cards themselves, but it's a nice little three-card run here. I was able to get all three of them in one auction for a really good price. It's too bad Ryan Braun turned into the player he was because he had a really promising career. All right, and now we've got, I believe this is 2004. 14, let me see, sorry, yeah, 2014 National Treasures, this is the game ball, I don't see too many game ball signatures from National Treasures, but this is one of them, I thought at first this was a sweet spot when I first saw it listed, just because <laughs> that was the style of sweet spot, which you'll see in a second, these are numbered out of just 10, so an early National Treasures card, of oh, Ripken out of just 10, um, I feel like... In the future, you'll see these prices go up and up just because it's early National Treasures and that's all the craze these days. Sticking with game ball autographs, even though these aren't game used. Um, here's a nice sweet spot signatures of Ripken. This is 2003. This is an earlier one. This is one of my favorite designs with the red background and the gold. Nice overall looking card there. Sticking with the sweet spot. These are numbered to just 75. I believe this is 04. Sorry, there's some cat hair on these cards. Uh, these are 05. This is the 05 version. They didn't change it up all that much. I just love the yeah, the baseball. I wish these were game used. I don't see why they couldn't have got just game used baseballs and had the players sign them in the cards. I mean, I'm sure Upper Deck had access to tons and tons of game used baseballs so they could have just grabbed a bucket and just pulled this <laughs> pulled the leather off and put them in the cards but either way these are nice nice design i like how the upper deck logo and the orioles logo kind of bump into the card a little bit with the the portrait down here below Next, we have a 2021 Tops Clearly Authentic. This is the blue parallel. Number to just 25. These are cool cards. These are acetate right through. Alan Ginter. And they got to hand it to Tops. They have made... They, <laughs> they are very hit or miss when it comes to their products. Some is such nice high-end stuff and other... <laughs> Others, they just drop the ball on, but 
this is one that I think they did. They got right. Here is a 2019 Tops one of one. This is a canvas collection. This is the sketch. This is an actual act the actual sketch of the card. You can see like the actual pencil lines and everything on the card itself. So this is actually hand drawn onto the card. This is from Museum Collection. It's signed by the artist here as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, see the one of one logo up there. There wasn't too many one of one canvas collections from this year. So it's not like the stadium club versions from a few years prior to this where they had about 30 or 40 different random people just drawing the sketch cards and putting them in the packs. These are a lot more rare and harder to come by. Here's one that I've never had owned before. I um, was able to finally pick this one up. It's looks like it was stuck together in the packs. This is the uh, 1999 Skybox Premium Intimidation Nation. These are always super tough to find, and they always go for high, high premiums. Like I said, looks like it was probably recently pulled from a pack, and they had some bricking going on, so it pulled a little bit of foil off the fa off of his face. You can see that there. A little bit on the back too, but nothing crazy. I just wanted to get one of these in my collection finally. Here is kind of nice one, uh, 2014. I mean, just a nice classic looking card. This is a one of one version of it. Um, this is the 75, 75th anniversary of Panini. Nice hollow foil, one of one. Nice classic look of the card on the back. Next we have kind of cool one. Uh, it's got the silver patch. Little silver emblem inside. the like, Recessed inside of the card. These are autograph versions out of just 10. This is a 2021... Next we have one I just picked up the other day. This is a 2001 Fleer Platinum. This is the uh, Dual Bat Auto version of this. This is a super hard, I believe it's a redemption. These are supposed to be out of 100, um, but who knows how many were actually redeemed from this set. I don't think it was an overly popular set. Um, it's not serial numbered or anything. There's a regular bat version of this, but this is the bat dual auto combo. I like it how it's signed on the piece of the bat itself, which is kind of neat. Next is some of my favorite stuff. The uh, this is 2005 Ultimate Tandem. I love the Upper Deck Ultimate stuff. I've gotten a good amount of it over the past year. Uh, this is the Mike Schmidt. Ripken Duel, numbered to just 35. And here is a really nice looking one. The Ripken and Jeter, same thing, numbered to just 35. Really sweet looking patches here. There's the backs of them. Here's another cool combo. Um, I wish A-Rod was on the Mariners, but if he was, I probably would have had more competition for this card. Uh, this is the SP game used, I believe, from 03. Let me see. 04. This is 04. SP game used patch um, of Alex Rodriguez and Cal Ripken. Numbered to just 25. Here is a fresh off the market. 2021 gold label. This is a one of one. Topps gold label. I feel like if you're going to have Topps gold label, Topps gold label never puts nice patches in any of their... They don't really have many patches in their um, game use department. So even if for one of one, they don't eat, they just put a piece of gray jersey, which is kind of disappointing. I feel like if there's a patch, this card would demand a high premium. 
Because it's a nice looking card overall. It's just, I don't know why for one of one you just put a basic jersey in, in 2021. <laughs> like when everything is a patch. Next is one of my favorite runs of a more recent product. This is the Tops Black. I don't know if I showed off a couple of them. I was finally able to get the full run of these. So like these have a cool matte finish on them. This is just the regular black version. These are unnumbered. This is kind of like the base auto version. Um, here is the emerald. This is one of my favorite ones here. Just that. It's got that cool greenish blue color to it. These are numbered to 99. Here is the gold version out of 50. So it's got, like I said, it's got a matte version, but it's also got this weird like hollow foil look to it too. So it's got the best of both. I don't know. It's just like a slick looking card. I love the matte black finish on anything. Cars and cards and <laughs> whatever. And then here is... Most recent one I picked up. This is the uh, orange version, number 25. I'm not 100% sure. I think there might be a one of one version. But I'm not 100% sure. The 2021 version has a numbered out of five version as well. It's a red. Here is a 2020 Tops Transcendent. This is a Hall of Fame version. Got the awesome gold border. These cards are really thick. These are 180 point cases. Nice looking transcendent here. Nice design. Good classic picture of him from, let's say, the mid to late 80s. Here is a, just a giant patch here. Uh, National Treasures. This is 2016. This is a colossal oh, number to just three. Just a giant looking patch here. Next is a really nice one I like. It is a 2005, sorry, 2005 sweet spot. This is the bat version. Autograph. I again. I don't think these are game used. I think these are just pieces of wood. Even though it says it's a bat barrel, usually upper deck would say that it's game used. But like their baseballs, I don't. The baseballs definitely aren't game used. So I don't think. I'm not a hundred percent sure if these are. If anyone has any information on that, then I'd like to know about it. But for some reason, I don't think these were game used. I could be wrong. But it's a nice thick looking. It's a nice thick cut of that bat too. It's not just like a little sliver. It's That's a good almost quarter inch thick. Next I got one I really really like. It reminds me of. Um, it reminds me of like a Topps. Topps gallery or Topps. I don't know. It reminds me of a Topps product for some reason. But it's not. It's ultimate collection from Upper Deck again. Uh, it's a quad patch. Maximum Materials, just a loaded patch here. This is from 2006. Next we have one that Chuck has been eyeing for quite some time from me. Uh, this is the, uh, sorry, this, I'm gonna take this out of case. I gotta swap this penny sleeve over anyway. Case is still all scratched up, so it's still not a good look. Um, this is the sweet spot. There we go. Give it its due justice. The sweet spot. Um, triple swatch. Gee, there's just unbelievable patch. They skimped out on Ripken. It's a patch, but it's just an all black one. And then Ozzy Smith. Like three of my favorite shortstops on one card. I always loved Ozzy Smith. He was a little before my time in terms of watching him play, but like seeing him towards the end of his career and some of the highlights of his defense, like was unreal. Here is a 2020 Tops Definitive. 
New Jersey Auto out of just 10. This is the Emerald version. A couple different parallels to these. I like the design of this. I like the I always like the the green color on these cards. And I like the definitive logo as well. Here we got a nice little run, and I have another one on the way to complete kind of this run. So this is uh Pentamerous penmanship. I don't know if I've showed this one off before. I got oops, this is the gold version number to 15. Then we have, I got the one number to 10 on the way. So this one's numbered to just five. And this has got a hull foil and it's kind of like a bronze-ish. This one's kind of more orange. And this one's numbered to just three. So it's not too much different other than other than this outer border on them. But these are just awesome looking cards. They're hollow foil and acetate on them. The backs are sweet looking too. So, I was able to get the run of those. Here is a 2020 Tops Transcendent. Another Hall of Fame version. Uh, these are the Emerald versions. Number to just five. I like that shield. Next, we have a new product, newer product that I really like. Um, it's the diamond. I've taken a liking to this whole product. This diamond icons. So Topps already has like a commemorative card of this, which really bothers me because this is 2020, um, but it's a nice classic looking card. So here it's like an emery board finish almost like the, the black is all scratchy. And it's kind of recessed. See the card kind of, there's actually kind of thick cards. It doesn't look like it, but it's two tiered. I like the gold foil on this. These are numbered uh, out of 25. Here's a 2021 Diamond Icons. This is the purple parallel. See the same memory board type finish. This is numbered to just 10. And here's one I really like. I unfortunately missed out on the one of one. But, uh... Here's kind of like the base version out of 25. It's a really cool, really cool looking design. Here's that version. And then here is the purple version out of 10. And then here is the red version out of just five. It's a really sweet looking card. I'm getting down to five more. Here is a 2019 Tops Transcendent, numbered out of 25. Another good older looking picture of him. This is one of the nicer designs, I think, of the Transcendent. The 2022 that just came out, I really like the design of it as well. It's got a kind of his picture here and then the autograph on the right hand side. Similar to this except the picture is bigger and the autograph section is a little smaller. I haven't been able to find one yet, but I really like this one. Next, we have a 2004 Super Tough 2004 Tops Black. This is the Refractor Auto. These are out of just 25. These are highly sought after. This is number 10 out of 25. Really nice looking card here.
Next, we got a 2020 Topps Transcendent. This is the red version. This is the one of one. Graded by SGC. Normally, I wouldn't have it in the slab. I'd, at this point, though, I'm not going to break it out. This is graded high enough. And it kind of looks good in the black case overall with <laughs> with that red bordered card. So I think I'll leave it in. Told you we'd uh, circle back to that Topps Tech from 2019. This is the Topps Tech 2019. Uh, this is the one of one, the gold version. This thing really pops. I end up trading this for a definitive one of one in the head. It's hard to pick up on camera right now. Same thing on the back. <coughs> and last but not least, here is probably the best pickup I had over the past five months. This is Top Sterling, one of one autographed bat barrel, game used bat barrel nameplate right on it so basically <laughs> right at the sweet spot where his autograph is on the bats they cut that slice out uh, this is such a nice looking card I got the hollow foil finish the game used one of one autographed <laughs> it's got everything going for it really nice design on the back too but the front is where you focus on for the most part and so this is 2006 Sterling. I'm oh, no, sorry. Not 2006, 2020. I have a couple 2006 Sterling one of ones as well. Um, but yep. So that's going to do it for this episode. Um, hope you guys suck around for the end to see <laughs> to see the last couple. Hopefully I'll be making another video soon when I get some more pickups. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.